What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Under the Ropes podcast. I'm your host, as always, Kyle Masters. Unfortunately, we couldn't get this interview off live uh, due to some technical difficulties. Um, so you're going to be listening or watching this podcast about uh, about five to six minutes in once this transitions into uh, the whole intro was uh, recorded live, but there were choppy bits and we just couldn't put it together. So uh, you're not missing a lot of the interview. He's just going on about how he started as a professional wrestling referee and it'll be transitioned to right as soon as I'm done talking here. So enjoy the interview here with referee Nick Shin. Wrestling magic. So what he did was he hit me up one day and was like, hey, we need an extra referee. I know you're trained. I know you know what you're doing. Come do it. And then I went there and I refereed at Pro Wrestling Magic. And literally probably did the worst refereeing job I've ever done in my life. I was nervous as hell, had no clue who any of the guys I was refing were. Uh, then oddly enough, at the end of the night, the owner, Steve Off, comes up to me. He gives me a 20 in an envelope and he says, hey, I'll see you next show, right? And I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh, shoot, this actually worked. <laughs> so I kept going back, kept going back and eventually i became uh now i'm the senior official at pro wrestling magic oh. i eventually somehow got better and started working at it and literally from working at pro wrestling magic everything else followed like That's awesome pro wrestling magic became one of the greatest gifts of my life just like a straight up gift from god because in working pro wrestling magic in doing so one time i was refing a, a rumble match or something Everybody's going out the ring, and Evander James was one of the guys. I'm sure, you've been a House of Glory show, so you know Evander James, little yeah. guy you can trust everything, big old lying son of a gun. Yeah. Well, my thing is, he was. I was doing the match, and he was in it, and he came out and was like, you know, I never seen anybody put over a rumble match as a referee. He was like, the facials you were making, the reactions you were making were great. How about you come to House of Glory one day? And in my mind, I'm like, House of Glory, that's that place where I went to one time. Cause before I started, <laughs> like, like 2014 or 15, like right before I started, I had gone to their, uh, I forget what the event was, but it was the Hardy Boys versus the Private Party. And I was there watching it, and I was like, oh, yo, this is good. Like, <laughs> I could never do that. Oh, man, so Hardy told, Boys oh, and House of Glory. Wow. Yeah, so... He was like, yo, come through. And I was like, all right, I'll come. So I showed up, came early and everything, met with their promoter, uh, the one of the owners of the place, Brian, talked with him for a little bit. And then he explained to me how I'm not going to be on the show at all. He's not going to use me. He has no clue who I am and why did I show up. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Yep. That's, uh, That's how the story ends. In a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, that's almost how it ended, but luckily, because I swear this is like literally just God being just who he is for me, mm -hmm. they had a referee who was supposed to come that day. Well, lo and behold, as soon as we're having this conversation where he's telling me that I won't be able to work the show, who am I and why did I show up, the other referee comes from behind and says, hey, this guy called out, we have no other referees, what can we do about it? And I was just standing there like, hey. <laughs> I'm a rep. Hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah. <laughs> and literally I did it. And he said, you only get one match. If you do bad, you go home. And I was scared wow. crapless. <laughs> that's that's <Wow>. insane. <laughs> yeah. So I went out there not knowing who in the world anybody was. Uh, I think my first match was Leroy Green versus Matt Travis versus Ken Broadway. Wow. Yeah. That's Triple insane. Match. And I had no clue what was going on. It was my first time doing a New York show. It was my first time with that many people in the crowd. Uh, it was my first time also doing TV style wrestling where there was like, the thing is like different indie shows you go to, they won't have like real camera setups, but at House of Glory, the way they have it is they have it set up as kind of a TV style mm -hmm. where the camera people, TV positions where the referee needs to know how to maneuver to stay out of those right. positions so he's not in play. Right. That was my first time ever doing that. <laughs> I've never been in any of that kind of crap. So, <laughs> oh, wow. I ended up doing what I did. I ended up thinking it was horrible. By the end of the show, Brian was like, 
yeah, we have one more match. We need your help on it. And that match was a match where I had no business in. At the end of it, it was Amazing Red versus Low Key for the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, wow. I was like the first half of it. They did all kinds of stuff. It was the coolest match I've ever seen in my life because they ended up fighting on the stage and they fought with sticks and like it looked like a sword ninja fight for some reason. Jeez. But at the same time, it was amazing. Then it came back in the ring and the other referee got knocked out. Then I got to come in and make my big count. One, two, one, <laughs> double. One, two. Oh, he kicked out. <laughs> problem was the second i slid into the ring both of my knees hit the front of the ring so it was like Ooh. i slid but it was like boom oh. so i got it but i didn't sell it at all but in my mind i was crying so i'm like one two <laughs> i go to stand up and i'm like all right they about to do another thing i go to stand up and realize neither of my legs are working oh no so it was pretty much that Vince McMahon moment during the Royal Rumble mm -hmm. where, like, he went and he dropped and he hit his legs, but you couldn't tell that because he wasn't selling his legs, but his legs were screwed. Yeah. Those moments. But I fought through it. Nobody knew. Wow. It's my mom when I cried when I got home. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible, though. That's, wow. that's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a guy named there, Matthew Ryan Shapiro. Mm -hmm. He yeah. that house. He's an asshole. Can't stand him. <laughs> he's also an owner of Capital Wrestling, and he's like, that's my daddy. Every time I see him, that's Matt's daddy. And he now got me my spot at Capital Wrestling. And from Capital Wrestling, I've made friends who brought me to Drags and Drop Kicks, Uncanny Attractions, who just brought me to. From New South Wrestling in Alabama. They've literally just... Wrestling has brought me everywhere, and it's all just because you be nice to one person, then you move on to the next, and you move on to the next. Absolutely. And now let's move on to the next question. <laughs> all right, yeah, because that was the biggest first answer we've had so far. That's a, It was an amazing answer. That was... Incredible uh, to ask, know where you came from. You and... ask the hard questions, and I give the really hard <laughs> long. We ask you the cream of the crop. That's all we ask here. Oh, <laughs> um, So we'll get into that second question. So this is a uh, this is an interesting one. So uh, Nick, don't think it goes unnoticed here, but we know you like to dance a lot in the ring. Uh, serious question alert, though. Have you taken <laughs> ballet? Okay. <laughs> this is gonna really surprise you. Okay, I'm ready for it. I hate dancing. Oh. <laughs> Stop it. I hate this so what much. That's a lie. Listen, it's a fit. Listen, don't even play yourself. I see you at all these shows. You're full of baloney. Okay? No, I'm yes. full of I am over. That is why I dance. Mm. <laughs> so, all right. See, every time I just want to give a quick answer. No, see, she's telling me I'm full of baloney. Now I got to just throw out. This is going to be one of the longest podcast for my stupid long answers, but whatever. So... When I was wrestling, I originally wanted to be Batman. Oh. So I used to call myself Bruce Dwayne. Oh, Why no. Bruce Dwayne? You can't be Bruce Wayne because I'm black, so it's Dwayne. So <laughs> Bruce Dwayne. I had my little singlet and everything. It had the custom Batman on it and all that. It was dope. Then I was told I can't do that because you can't be a superhero in wrestling because that's wrong and stuff but my my old teacher had a lot of weird things with him that didn't make sense nowadays and i look back at that i'm just like you were you're stuck in your ways but you were good on basics and mm -hmm. that's what i needed but at the same time back to the important stuff so one time i was getting into the ring before my match and my song was playing and i was like come along and ride on a fantastic voyage <laughs> yes it's a dope song Problem was, I tripped into the ring. Oh, but I know. No, no, see, you make it sound, but I am a true performer. Oh. You see, what I did was I fell on one leg, but I kept hopping and hopping and hopping. And then I was like, "Oh, these idiots think I'm dancing. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm gonna get this one." Then I started dancing to the other side, but I was really just trying to catch my balance. But they didn't know. Because it was a very, a very melaninless crowd, and 
they couldn't tell. They didn't know what, what a beat was or anything or dancing to rhythm. What's <laughs> rhythm to them? So I just kept moving. They were like, yeah, dance, <laughs> dance. So I was like, oh, this is all you got to do to be over? And you know what? It worked. Hmm. So as a referee, oddly enough, people just always end up putting me in these weird positions where I have to dance. <laughs> like, okay. I've never, I've never gone to a spot saying, yo, I want a dance spot. I need a dance spot. It's literally <laughs> like private party in Young Bucks. Yeah. Of course I would want to do something to put myself over extremely well during that match. I'm not going to say, yo, at some point, yo, throw out that dance spot out of nowhere. <laughs> back and i'm just standing there in the middle of the match and they start playing music i'm like oh a dance spot I'm lit. <laughs> so no i've never been trained in dancing and i personally hate dancing yeah. i feel like i feel like little black sambo every time they make me dance <laughs> oh boy dance, yeah dance plus <laughs> line last week got deep kick um <laughs> deep, what was it uh drop kick uh drop depression, drop depression. Yeah. yeah so they were doing the, i i had made you a gif <laughs> I took a video. they had a conga line and was i the only referee dancing you were not ryan was on it too <laughs> but 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 ryan was there who was the most rhythmic dancer there <laughs> Mm. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> no. Ryan was doing Macarena, like he was trying I to get the that's way what he going. Said. As the Macarena, <laughs> that's it. That's one move. Basic dance move ever. I killed his gimmick. I did it. What up, Ryan? You wrestle. I used to wrestle. I don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to get Ryan on the show next to like you know come back. Yeah, you should. I loved him. That was my first time actually working with him. Really, it was another yeah. cool guy. I know, like Kyle, and a lot of people don't know who this is, but like again, a lot of people that we've been working from are I know from New York. So there you have it. But <laughs> all right, moving on to the next question. All right, yeah. you got who is your favorite wrestler or maybe wrestlers um, growing up? Okay. It changed. Originally, when I was young, it used to be The Rock. Oh. But as I started wrestling, Jimmy Valiant. Oh, that's the last page there. Man. Oh my gosh, I love the Boogie Woogie Man. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, every single thing that he did was my character. So what I would do was watch his matches and not just like, you know how some people say, like, you're supposed to take and change things a little bit? Nah, I'd just rob his moves and <laughs> every single thing he would do. Because it was so simple and so easy. All mm. you need is character to get his stuff over. So, oh, throw him off. Oh, big elbow. Yeah. Oh, oh, I got to <laughs> dance, look like an idiot. Big leg drop, boom. That's it. No bumps, no flips, no picking anybody up, no doing anything to anybody that you don't want done to you. Easy stuff. So, yeah, I mean, The Rock, too, as a kid, but that's just, I think it's just a granted The Rock, Stone Cold. Right. Yeah. yeah. And Kane. Kane, too, because he was the one who, like, when I was a kid, I saw him in the mall once, and he kind of made me, like, start watching wrestling. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was, yeah I think like, it was Undertaker that made me start watching wrestling, so almost the same. Yeah. Big scary guys, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And Something was, different. Yeah. A lot of people do a lot of like generic, you know, wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Ask them. But. All right. Watch more Boogie Woogie Man. Boogie the Boogie Woogie Man is the man. <laughs> um, to the people who don't know, uh, what kind of referee are you and how will you describe yourself? Are you the keep it by the books kind of ref? Or are you a uh, Nick Patrick style of referee crookedness? <laughs> Uh, for me, it honestly depends on the promotion I go to and how long I've been there and what this match's situation is. I'll ref a different style depending on the wrestlers themselves because with me, what I try to do is, as much as I want to put myself over and stuff, mm -hmm. I never would do that in an actual match setting because it takes away from it. Like, 
for wrestling, it should be a three-person sport. It's a two-person with that third person. That third person is the referee. And what my job is to do is to make sure that all of you, the fans, can tell exactly what I what the re- wrestlers want you to feel at that moment. Mm. So if I go into something like a House of Glory, I'm not going to be as jumpy and dancy and active and smiley as I usually am. Mm-hmm. What I'm going to do more so is just work the whole regular TV rep, try to stay out the way, try to make sure that the, I'm more so checking, making sure that their safety is intact more so than just mm-hmm. keeping the fun of it. Right. I'm just also making sure things like they're out of the way of the cameras or the cameras got a good shot of them. I'm looking out for more things. It's a lot harder for a TV style, but most of the time I try to just keep myself as relaxed as possible and just have fun with it. Like at pro wrestling magic, I don't do what I want, but I do what I want. If that makes any sense. Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I see the parameters of wrestling. But at the same time, if I feel the need to just like somebody's theme songs coming on and their entrance music is one of my favorite songs and then I'm just feeling like Lil Black Sambo, I'm going to start dancing. <laughs> yeah. I've seen that yeah. plenty. I've but seen- at the same time, if it's something like that at House of Glory and I really like the song, I'm just going to sit there still and just in my mind be doing it. But <laughs> the Mental dance. Yeah, but at the same time, it's TV time, so I got to be more serious. Same with Capital Wrestling. Now I'm starting to, I'm starting to just get into my own there, where I could find a little medium where I could still do my own thing. But I understand that now on Capital, we just they just work deals with Fight TV. They're now shown in Zimbabwe, Africa. They're oh, in wow. Hong Kong. Literally, they on each show they're supposed to be doing about a million views per show. So. Hmm. That's something where I know I can't just go out and be exactly what I want to do and just have fun with it. I got to be more personable and make it more serious of a job. And that's what I do. Gotcha. <laughs> awesome. There's a lot of different promotions like that. I've definitely seen it in the indies all over the seriousness and then the fun. Mm-hmm. So. Thank you. Like Dropkick Depression, you were at. That was just me having fun. Yeah. That was all it was. Like I wasn't. <laughs> Was the funny weird. thing with those is literally with those matches, I had no clue what was going on for anything until they finished. <laughs> and that's the way <laughs> I like most of my matches. Like if, you, if you've ever, if any wrestlers on here are listening, <laughs> you can tell me if I'm lying. I'll get really <laughs> pissed off if you try to tell me too many things about your match because I won't care and I won't remember them. And you all know <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to know your spots, and you know if you don't tell me, it'll be better. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> nah, that really just matters on the referee because some referees you really you have to tell them every single section. But I've actually done enough refereeing and training not to big myself up. But mm-hmm. I've watched I watch, specifically watch referees and matches, and I watch a lot of old school matches to learn ref spots and things like that. I have guys now who I'll referee who will say, oh, I don't want him to ref. I need Nick to ref my match. And something oh. like that will just, like, it makes me feel special because it's like, okay, I still don't know what the hell you're going to do, but I know that you have the trust in me to make sure that I'll keep you safe and keep everything copacetic. And it just makes me feel good. Like, your buddy gang gone, I will just walk up to him when he has matches. Yo, knee thingy? Yeah. I bet. <laughs> that's all I'll speak to him about. I don't want to know anything else because I want to see the match. I want to enjoy it. Gotcha. <laughs> <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> good shit. See, you are special. See, this is why I asked you to come on the podcast. What do you, what do you mean by special? I didn't say it. I didn't say it. <laughs> I, was you're awesome. it. No. I no. mean that. You're awesome. That's why I asked you to come on. So, moving forward. What mm. is your Favorite match of all time that you have seen and or continued to watch today? Uh, <laughs> let's see. This isn't one I'm in, right? No, like you, like a wrestling match that you've you've seen, saw- like like a Bret Hart versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania, or like your, your you know your favorite match of all time. Uh, okay, <laughs> I just recently saw a match and I can't remember. I know it was an Akira Maeda match and Akira Maeda versus Norman Smiley. Oh my gosh. That was lit. Like, I watched it probably, I've 
watched the match the first time about two months ago, and I swear I've watched it about 20 times since then. So the whole thing was, it was like I started watching it because I just wanted to watch a bunch of Akira Maeda shoot videos where he's just literally kicking the crap out of everybody. Mm -hmm. And then I saw like Akira Maeda versus Norman Smiley. Now, what a lot of people don't know is they remember Norman Smiley from like WCW where he was like the dancing guy and just like getting, he did the big wiggle and all that. But he was a worker. Like that man's holds and everything was like prestigious the way you could just maneuver from hold to hold still put everything on still keeping it looking real and everything but like him versus akira maeda was a fight wow so it started off like a wrestling match but it ended up a fight oh because akira maeda was like seriously throwing like those shoot kicks those yeah. shoot chops elbows of forearms and everything and he's Damn. coming back and he's actually like you see norman like countering it and then at some point you realize like oh he really countering countering oh <laughs> Like, I'll have to check this out. To snap, he's trying to like snap Akira's like ankle in the in the ankle lock Jesus. and all that, and I'm like, oh, I can see the twerk on that. That's real. <laughs> then I see like Akira fighting out of it, going back to it. The end of the match was a knockout. Wow. So this is bringing the res the the whole receipt Norman thing in wrestling. Got yeah. Knocked out. He got kicked right in the head. Oof. Then he got up. He got up ready to go, but the ref called it. Wow. That the fight that that was one of my favorite matches I've watched recently. That's <laughs> insane. That's insane. Yeah, they have the whole I thing on you. Y'all should watch it. Y'all yeah. should watch. It. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Like from the eighty some, it's eighty something. Okay. Yeah. Definitely gotta check this out. So staying <laughs> on the same topic though, what's been your favorite match so far to referee? Uh, easy. Question easy answer for me would have to be uh Tajiri, Great Buddha, and Pentagon versus the LAX and Low Key. Oh, we were there for that. There. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that was like that was a dream come true. Like that whole time, the second they said that they were doing that match, like I was thinking, like, yo, I need to ref this. And there was <laughs> other ref Zeno, he's the senior official for House of Glory. And I was like, yo, Z. I know you usually get these dream matches and stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't, though. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't. Dude. Not today. And the, like, they were like, we went over it, and we were like going over the card and everything. Because between me and him, we're the only refs, so we were doing ref assignments and stuff. Occasionally, we'll have like one straggler ref who just comes around and wants to just because... I've realized, like, actually, there's like usually four or five people who come and want a referee at the show, but... The amount of hassle I got when I first started, right. some reason it's become even worse now for the referees. I don't know what the hell y'all did, but <laughs> <laughs> I got it before it became really hard. Oh, man. So it was like I eventually got got him to be like, all right, fine, you do the match. And I just remember, like, as soon as the LAX came out, I was like, all right, this is dope. I'm used to them. I've done this before. Low key came out. I was like, I right. I remember him from my first day, and we've had mad conversations afterwards because he's just mad friendly and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, cool, I got this. Pentagon comes out, and I'm like, okay, Pentagon's the homie. We just I just refed him like two or three weeks, months in a row. Like mm -hmm. we're, cool, we're cool now. Tajiri comes out, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's just shit. <laughs> oh. Then I, like, have a random flashback. Like, mm -hmm. it, like it's weird. Like, literally through my head, like, every single time I've seen Tajiri on a SmackDown or a Raw or an ECW just flashed through my head. Wow. And I was like, yo, that's really freaking Tajiri. Like, Tajiri, Tajiri. And he's in shape. And he doesn't look old. Mm -hmm. Like. It was crazy. I was telling Tiff too because like that was my first ever House of Glory, and I didn't know what to expect going into it. And then seeing all those guys, like even Muda, I remember from Muda from before, and I'm going like, "Damn, like this is insane! Like this is crazy you know, right now." When Muda came out and everything, like he came into the ring, he did his thing, like he did his Muda walk. I was like, "Yo, <laughs> this is great, Muda." If you actually rewatch the match on Fight TV, you see David Adams like sneak over and he's whispering in my ear and he's telling me like yo 
we're never going to be we at this high level of high in our life again. <laughs> like something like that. Like we'll mm-hmm. never reach this high again in our lives because we could both feel the energy from like the crowd, mm-hmm. everything. You could feel that in you. And then low key, I realized like as soon as like I backed up and everything, they did like the big miss, the three of them and everything. Yeah. They were backed up one side and backed up on the other side and like a tear came out of my eye because I really haven't ever been that happy in my life like nothing had touched me so much where I'm like yo all around me is people that I've watched on TV people that I've been growing up watching great mood I hear Stone Cold talk about I'm on the Stone Cold podcast like every other show or something like I'm really here and I've really done this and made it Mm-hmm. And I just thought, like, it was weird because it's after I rewatched it, I'm like, those moments went by so fast, but it was the longest moments of my life. Wow. And it's something that I wouldn't change or take away or anything. Like, House of Glory is mm-hmm. really afforded to be some of the coolest, greatest matches ever. Like, mm-hmm. I could say that, or I could even say Bully Ray versus Sammy Callahan. Like, mm-hmm. that's another time where I was just like, Yo, (laughs) I never called him bully the entire time he was there. I kept calling him Bubba. (laughs) (laughs) He was like, yo, it's bully now. I was like, nah, bro, you're Bubba. (laughs) (laughs) And the problem is, like, he's a really big, scary guy. Mm. So he was like, don't call me bully. And in the middle of the match, I kept calling him Bubba. (laughs) I was like, yo, nah, you're Bubba. (laughs) Then out of nowhere, they started, like, to get the, like, I guess this happens a lot now, I guess, in Cows of Glory. This is, I guess that would be the second time it happened when I was in with Great Muda. But when I was outside, like, Bully was, like, chopping Sammy, beating him up on the outside of the ring. The crowd started to get the cha- get the tables chant. And I was standing there, and I was like, yo, why am I crying? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. dead little tears were coming out of my eyes because it's like, wrestling has just afforded me to do so much Mm -hmm. and in the amount of time that i've been doing the refereeing and all that i've been in the ring with so many guys and so many superstars and legends and people i've watched all my life like i shouldn't be doing what i'm doing but then having them afterwards complimenting me and telling me oh you did great or bully came over after he gave me the elbow and everything that dislocated my jaw for a day I was like, yo, are you okay? I was like, yo, I'd do that again every day of my life if you wanted. <laughs> and I really meant it. Like, the pain that you feel, like, in the wrestling ring, it doesn't it doesn't matter to you on the outside of it. Mm. Even as a referee, like, it, you can get your ass kicked and still be happy that you got your ass kicked and be walking around limping and bleeding. And, and I ain't really talk to your jaw, literally. <laughs> I see all guys like that. Like, you know, now, like, I feel like I've been, you know, getting to know a lot of the wrestlers now. And I just see it. And me as a fan, um, and I talk about this all the time, that it's just, especially in the indies, and I will always put over the indies, and it's just something special. And it's like, so if I'm feeling, you know, that it's so special to me as a fan, Mm -hmm. I can only imagine what, you know, you guys were. Because originally you were a fan growing up. Mm -hmm. So. So, like, to, like, be involved like with all this, it's just, I can only imagine what you guys, like, feel. So The one thing I want to point out about, uh, or the craziest thing about, uh, we'll go back to the, the Muda thing, was when me and Tiff saw Muda there at the House of Glory event, me and Tiff later that day went to the G1 Supercard at Madison Square Garden, and yeah. they had a battle royal, their, their gimmick battle royal they have in the pre-show, and who comes out in that battle royal? Great Muda. I'm like... I just they- seen this guy wrestle not even two hours ago. Now he's over here wrestling. Yep. <laughs> At that crazy. point, I was getting thrown by a really hot lesbian. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was weird times. Like, directly after the House of Glory show was, nah, see, it sounds crazy. It sounds like a really crazy time, but afterwards was Uncanny Attractions, Drags, and Drop Kicks, which is a show that's dedicated to show that no matter who you will love, gay, straight, homosexual, bisexual, trisexual, quadrosexual. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's single sex. Yeah, single, single sexual. Single sexual. And all those. Yeah. Well, no matter what it is, I love you all, but still, 
the whole point of the show was there was a lot of gay people, straight people, and all together. And at the end of it, well, towards the middle of it, at some point, I got hip tossed by this really cute lesbian. And yeah, that's where that gets thrown in. It's a highlight of the night right there. <laughs> there you go. Good story to tell. <laughs> um, okay, so we know you recently refereed the match of House of Glory between Private Party and the Young Bucks. Uh, I did? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's such a historic match. I like, hope you remember. <laughs> I was there. History? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, that was the Young Bucks' last independent match. <laughs> really? Yeah. Are you sure? Wow. You were there. You're in the ring. You're on. You're on I being was? the elite. You're on everything. <laughs> What's being the elite? I've never reposted anything like that. Oh, God, I don't know. I heard... Did they pay me? If yeah. Not, where's I don't my, know. Where's my royalty check? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> I want 0.5 cents for every click. Oh, God. Fair, enough, fair amount. Oh, jeez. Um, so can you elaborate on the experience of that match and the surprise of Hangman Page? Uh, I had no clue about any of the stuff after the match, actually. <laughs> and to be brutally honest... I didn't know anything about the match, period. Yeah. Our, our, boy, oh. our boy Jerry was on commentary, and he said he wasn't even aware of what uh, Hangman coming out after. And you could hear it in the playback, his legit, like, crazy, like, oh, my God, it's Hangman Page. And, like, it was just the emotion. Even the arena was going nuts. Like, people were just, like, it, it was a crazy was time. Funny. My thing is, whenever I ref a, par a private party match, I literally say to them, like, two things. Gin and juice, <laughs> random dance spot. <laughs> and they'll either answer yes to both or maybe. <laughs> and I was like, yo, gin and juice, random dance spot. And Isaiah's like, yo, yeah, gin and juice is going to be hit. It's not the finish, though. <laughs> I right, bet. What's the finish? We don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, all right. So I'm ready and everything. About to go do another match and stuff. I'm like, all right, I'll get it when I come back. Go do my match and everything. Come back. Yo, y'all got finished yet? Nah. All right, cool. Go do my other match. Come back. Yo. What's good with that finish, though? We, we're trying to get it together. We don't quite know what we want to do. All right, I got another match. Bet. I'll be back. Go out, do my match, come back. Yo, we up. Y'all got that finish yet? <laughs> nah, we ain't got it yet. <laughs> Maybe a dance spot's going to be in there. We don't know. We don't know. Nah. So what should I know? You're, you'll be fine, Nick. You'll be fine. <laughs> so like, All right. They, they might be ribbing me right now. So I'm like, I right, bet. I got to ask Nick and Matt. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Nick. Hey, hey, buddy. Hi, friend. Hi, I'm Nick. I'm your referee. Yada yada. So, I'm um, uh, what's happening in this match? <laughs> oh, you're reffing us? Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, we don't really know yet. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> like, he's, uh, so I'm like, I right, bet, bet, we out, we out. Let's do this. I'm like, I don't need matches anyway. Who, who am I? I'm Nick Shin. <laughs> going out there, feeling all good and stuff. Matches going. I'm like, oh, they doing stuff. Oh, they doing stuff. Oh, there's that melter thingy. Oh, the flippy thingy. Oh, yep. <laughs> Can't kick out of that. One, two, three. Was that the finish? <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> out of nowhere i'm like all right cool match is done they about to do their little all celebration they all friends and stuff now cool so i go get out the ring and everything I'm like cool yep oh they don't need to be they're not gonna fight and everything i don't need to stand there and separate the competition anymore brian comes out and the wrecking crew comes out and i'm like yo <laughs> should i be going in there to stop this <laughs> Like, cause you know, sometimes they want the referee to go in and just act like a a buffer to the situation. Like mm -hmm. I'm trying to do anything. I'm just standing out there, just standing and watching. Just like I'm actually sit standing right next to commentary, like trying to whisper in their ears, "Yo, <laughs> y'all know 
going on here? <laughs> no, no, where Hangman just comes out of nowhere and stuff, cleans house and everything. I'm like, yo, I know you. <laughs> like a year ago. <laughs> I repped you before you were popping. (laughs) After I saw him, I was like, yo, it was good. I was like, yeah, how you been, bro? I was like, I've been great, man. It's really weird. It's really weird. Wrestling is weird, yo. Yeah. (laughs) That's insane. (laughs) It's really weird. Um, Do you have a dream match that you want to referee or be a part of one day? Like, do you have, like, a scenario that you know two guys you want to see wrestling you want to you want to ref that match is there anything like that maybe uh it's a weird question i know (laughs) no it's really not especially for this industry it's kind of normal but i always wanted to ref stone cold but i kind of don't want to ref stone cold because i'd rather want to watch it Mm. but at the same time another guy would be uh, I really want to ref Cody. Mm. Yeah. Like, okay. if I would have started at uh, Pro Wrestling Magic a year beforehand, I could have done it. Oh, that's but right. But I myself then, so yeah. But yeah. That's Other true. than that, that's about it. And eventually, one day, I'll get you, Cody. Just you wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll clip this. We'll send it to him. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So you're currently refing for numerous uh, independent wrestling companies. Is there a company out there that you have your eye on that you would love to work for uh, for one day? Oh, yeah. Uh, I definitely want to go to What Wrestling in Rhode Island. Ooh. Uh, I've seen a lot of the House of Glory guys there. And every time I've also seen guys that I used to train with going there. So, yeah. Um, another place is I want to work House of Hardcore. Oh, just cause yeah. House of Hardcore before? Wow. Uh, my thing is, I've met Tommy Dreamer on maybe like by now 20, 30 occasions. We're, we have a good rapport and everything, but my thing is every time I've wanted to or had the chance or opportunity to go there, it's been the same day as other shows that I'm doing. And wow. I'm one of those really horrible people, and I say horrible because I feel it, it, where once I've okayed going to something i'm not gonna turn it down Mm -hmm. last year i had two opportunities where i could have done the house of hardcore but at the same time then i would have had to turn down pro wrestling magic and that's my literal house yeah i'm there as much as i can be we're putting up the ring it's 10 minutes from my actual home so i'm like yeah Uh, (laughs) um speaking of house of hardcore I went to an early one it was about three or four years ago. It was actually in my hometown up here in Niagara Falls. And uh, really, really cool event. Uh, some of the people there that were awesome were uh, now Allie and Impact. She was Cherry Bomb back then with uh, Pepper Parks, who was Braxton Sutter and Impact Wrestling. I think he's back to Pepper Parks now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they were there. But the main event was the coolest thing ever. It was uh, uh, Bobby Roode versus Eric Young in a one-on-one match. And there was a special guest referee, and it was uh, Jimmy Corderas from the WWE was the, was the special guest referee. And he even wore his old blue SmackDown T-shirt or SmackDown uh, <laughs> referee shirt, which was pretty cool. Um, so that was that was a pretty good – it was a cool event. I, I thought it was a lot of fun, but that's cool. I, I, I'm, uh, I hope you get there. I hope you uh, ref for uh, them one day. Eh, it's literally just a matter of finding a free date. Like <laughs> my problem, is, you know, like now what I've realized is occasionally I get hit up by promotions, but the promotions that hit me up are always ones running on the same day as shows that I already do, uh. and it's established that I do. So I don't know if they're trying to steal me or something. <laughs> if I can do both, I would. I love you guys, but if you're not my home base. You're not my home base. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. This is a little bit, a little bit personal, a little bit serious here. Um, so there was an incident not too long ago involving a referee and a professional wrestler. A professional wrestler, I'm sure you're aware of it, where the wrestler took it too far and he started assaulting the referee on the outside and going nuts. Uh, what do you know of this situation, and what was your reaction, being an official yourself? Oh. <laughs> I'm not okay. That's it. 
Okay. I think I might have touched a nerve. I'm sorry. Oh, God. Uh, sorry. Okay. So, for a situation like that, I've been in situations before where I've refereed it. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. It was really funny. It was really funny. But here's my thing, yo. Like, I looked at it, and I watched and I was like, I right, maybe there was something wrong here. So I watched the entire match through. First off, one of the wrestlers was supposed to make save and kick out and everything. They didn't choose to do that, so it was more so the wrestler's fault than the ref's. Right. But even so, as the referee, I've mi- had times where I make mistakes in matches, and I've literally leaned in on the guys and been like, yo, what's your finish? I ain't got a match yet, or I do got a match yet. You're going to hit me with your finish because I fucked up. Or, yo, you want to just act, act crazy at me? I'm going to push you. Hit me back. Give me a stiffy if you need to. I don't mind it because mm-hmm. I earned it. Now, once I watched that back, I was like, I saw the referee like he first took a body slam from the dude. But when the referee was getting body slam, like there's a way that your body moves if you know how to take moves. I don't know how to explain this in a way that's not like killing things, but there's a way that your body's supposed to maneuver when getting picked up anyway, right. where it's naturally going to do it because you're used to taking these things. So the second he scooped him up and slammed him, I was like, all right, this referee either hasn't been trained properly in like in taking maneuvers and stuff, or he's just training only as a ref. Mm-hmm. And then after he pushed him out and stuff and the other dude started wailing on him and slomping on him, like, my thing was like, you got to kind of defend yourself, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, either you got to defend yourself or you got to sell. Yeah. Because he wasn't selling any of the stuff that was happening to him. Like, if it would have just been like, oh, I'm beating the crap out of you for real and I'm shoot beating you and I'm literally selling it around the arena like you're really yeah. beating the crap out of me, mentally you're going to realize, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But if you're just going to ball up and just like kind of die on every hit, it's just going to make a guy want to beat you up more because he's already pissed because his big spot was ruined. Like, right. You got to just remember, like, at the time when you're in the middle of wrestling, your brain isn't your regular brain. You're working on either a super adrenaline pumped brain, you're working on a super pre workout brain, or it's just the idea of like you're going with the crowd. In his mind, the crowd is saying to him, yo, we just watched that. The ref screwed you. You got to kick that ref's ass. All right, I got you, fans. This is for you. This is for me. This is for me again. This is for my partner. And this one is for me, too. But if he, I don't know. It's a weird situation. Yeah. But at the end of the day, referees, you got to be trained. Yeah, I, I see like, ref- from. Yeah. If a referee isn't trained as a wrestler first, He's not going to know how to protect himself in situations like that. Like, even if a dude is beating on you and giving you shoot strikes, if you train as a wrestler for real, for real, and you really give it your all, you know how to, you learn surviving stuff. You learn how to take a couple punches. You learn how to maneuver yourself so it's hitting you in more safe spots. You learn how to just get out of there Mm -hmm. instead of just crumbling and going into a ball in the ground where you're just going to get beat up more, but... At the same time, you never know unless you're in that situation what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. For all I know, I could be put in that same situation next week. So who knows? But if I do, just know I'll be dancing while I get my ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be there taking video. <laughs> much just like what Shapiro does to me every time. Kick me while I dance, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so being a referee, you must come across superstars you would love um that you would only dream of refing. Do you um do you or have you ever just like fanboyed and lost track of what you're supposed to be doing because of it? Uh yeah, the great Muda match. Yeah. yeah. I almost I think we touched base a little bit. Yeah, yeah we touched a little base with that. I was but I also, maybe yeah. there was another one or something that like was No, but I mean I walked right almost walked right right into their mist oh. like when they did the triple mist like i wasn't paying attention because i was like too into it and they shot it up and it was like inches from getting in my actual eyes so i would have been missed it at Jeez. the start of the match <laughs> um, speaking of yeah. uh 
Well, it's crazy stuff. Uh, what's the craziest thing you've seen a fan do to get your attention, maybe, or even a wrestler's attention? Uh, Anything that stands out to you that you're going to remember I forever? Before. <laughs> you had what? Like a slice of pizza, oh. an entire pizza. <laughs> <laughs> an like entire the pie whole, the whole pie <laughs> and I was so mad like I was so angry like I, I almost jumped the guardrail but the only thing that stopped me was Jesus Okay. <laughs> but I, at the same time the devil was like trying to help me propel over the guardrail but, but Jesus was like no my son you don't need to do this but it was a whole pizza <laughs> See, like a whole pizza. See, I'd be mad and for I getting the pizza the- on me, and I'd be mad because, you know, you're throwing a whole pizza away. <laughs> Yo, like, that's how I felt. Like, you wasted an entire pizza on me. Like, like, like I was a heel at that point, so I was like, yeah, I have great heat. Because when I got in the back, they were like, yeah, you got so much heat, you got a whole pizza thrown at you. And I was like, yeah, I got so much heat that I need to now clean off a damn pizza from my singlet. <laughs> and they threw a pizza at me. And you know who you want, like, and my thing was, wherever I, whatever promotion I go to, I always do my best to, like, make sure I help clean up and everything and put things away. You know how to, who had to clean up that pizza from the freaking floor afterwards? Is this on YouTube? I looked at it. I did. And I was supposed to. <laughs> I was supposed to clean it. Jesus. And I looked to grab somebody else to clean it because it's a whole damn pizza. I need to see this. Yeah, where is it? <laughs> I want to see this video. Literally just walking by pizza <laughs> over me. <laughs> like. My God. You, God! If it hadn't been, if if it was like a an area where I knew I wouldn't go to jail, like Nutley, I know if I would have fought one of the fans, I would have been in jail immediately. <laughs> if it had been in like a Brooklyn show, mm-hmm. Bronx, Queens, anything, <laughs> I, I promise you, I would have fought them. Mm-hmm. Oh my God! Because it's an entire pizza. Oh God. In time, like <laughs> <laughs> hashtag rest in peace pizza. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's the craziest thing they've done to get my attention. It got my attention. I'd <laughs> imagine so. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't usually curse at shows. I don't curse a lot. I curse that fan out. I got in a little bit of trouble in the back. I cursed everybody out, honestly. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so speaking of getting your attention, if the time came, mm-hmm. could you possibly contract could we possibly contract you to be our special guest referee for the super showdown match between me and Kyle? You see, once again with this special stuff, what do you mean by no. special? <laughs> Damn, we should have reworded this. Yeah, yeah, you really should have. You know, it's not like you didn't have a list of questions you're reading. Honorary, oh, oh. honorary <laughs> guest referee. Yeah, yeah, there you go, there you go. I'm just okay, a guest. Our, right? our, 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 our showdown. It's the showdown between me and Kyle. So, can we get you to come and uh, be our ref? <laughs> it depends. You guys, you got. Uh, See, with you guys, like, I don't quite know because I have a different rate depending on the types of matches and okay. stuff. And I don't know what kind of match this is going to end up. Is there <laughs> blood involved? There seems like there's going to be a lot of blood. I don't know from <laughs> blood and guts. Light tubes! Light tubes! <laughs> yeah, light tubes. That's like an ex- that's literally an extra five dollars. Okay. I'm not even lying. Gladly pay the extra five dollars. We'll give you the che- we'll give you the check. We'll you just write what you want on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, checks. I don't I don't do checks. <laughs> cash only, please. Yeah, I never said they'd pass. Not not white American cash, Kyle. Not this Canadian cash. Yeah, bring me some Canadian <laughs> crap. Money. <laughs> yeah, bring you my Monopoly <laughs> money. Monopoly <laughs> money, okay? Like, <laughs> I need it in a white envelope with my name written on it. All right, I got you. I got you. Not a problem. <laughs> you pay all wrestlers for future pay reference. A extra. I'll pay you a little extra, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, 
All I'm saying hey, is... Hey, 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 that's cheating. That's cheating. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that? He said he doesn't like being Nick Patrick. You can't do that. <laughs> Guys, here's the thing. If my head turns, I can't... If I... If literally, right now, I'll show you some magical crap. Watch this. <laughs> oh, I oh. I can't hear words that you're saying. Oh. I can't see you hear anything. Any... <laughs> you can die right now. I won't know it. <laughs> oh, you guys are still here. I thought you left. Oh, I couldn't hear okay, you. Yeah. I didn't hear where the chair. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't, let, I didn't let me, look at me. I got super kick for you. Let's go. <laughs> Referees, man. Once our backs turn, nothing happens that we know about. Tiffany, you don't, you don't need to super kick him. If you literally just nudge them, they go flying, and then they're out for a good 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Or you can hit them really hard and give them jaw-breaking elbows, and then they'll still be good. Yeah. <laughs> or throw a pizza. <laughs> No, see that that, that that nope. No. You would have thrown that at me as a ref, I would have been really tight because then you messed up my shirt. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm disqualified. Fighting. Ring the bell. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, um, <laughs> if the if it comes to a rare occurrence, do you have a plan B if wrestling actually doesn't eventually work out for you? Yeah, go back to plan A. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. World. He says, return to plan A. <laughs> All right. I like it. Like, wrestling didn't work out for me. I went and did the managing gimmick. The managing gimmick was, uh, it, actually, that was working out fine, but I just wanted to go back to the wrestling gimmick, and then I found the refereeing gimmick, and yeah. Let's say the refereeing doesn't work out. I have made more than enough friends in wrestling now where I can manage for years to come and still have more people. I got enough outfits, enough things that'll match with people. That's yeah, awesome. it's not a problem. It's just a matter of, hi, I'm Nick. You remember me? Yeah. Everybody that's remembers my you. That's awesome. Everybody knows you. Everybody. Then, knows you. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I just want to get better and better. That's it. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like Naruto with this. I want to be the whole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will be Love one of your friends. So. <laughs> Um, so going a little off the script here and hit you with a job interview question. Where do you see yourself in five years when it comes to wrestling or just life in general? Uh, somewhere with a contract. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty obvious, Full -time right? Full-time contract, I presume, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, my, uh... Goal is, my goal is something where I could actually, like, provide a living off of wrestling. Maybe. Like, having a regular job is fine and all and dandy, but... I know I'm not happy until the happiest moments of my life all have to do with me being inside of a wrestling ring. Like, nothing amounts to it. So I know that whatever I do, it needs to be with me in wrestling in five years' time. I know that I can do that if I really keep pushing and keep working towards it. Mm -hmm. I mean, wrestling's flourishing right now. It's uh, it's at its peak that it's ever been right now. There's so many companies out there. Maybe AEW comes knocking one day on Nick's door. Who knows? I mean, they are. They do have a, a slight melanin drop in their referees, but you know, uh, <laughs> you got some. You got some friends though there. That uh... yeah, got Bryce there. He is very nice. Um, I think that's actually the only one I know referee wise. But uh, other than that, it's funny because I was watching the last pay per view, mm -hmm. and in almost every match, there's been at least one guy I've refed. Well, I think awesome. the only match that that's... didn't have somebody that I refed was, uh, was he? Who did Chris Jericho face? Hangman Page? Yeah, I don't know. Ref Page. Uh, you so Kenny you, Omega. Cody and Sean Spears? Uh, I worked with Sean Spears. We did, like, backstage interviews and things like that. Oh. So I counted as being with them. That's awesome. Kind of. He's. I'm yeah. actually, like, a huge fan of his. That's He's, like... My he was doing one. the indies for a while, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like he was indies before WWE oh, yeah. and after. That's where I know yeah. him from. <laughs> he did a lot around yeah. here too, so I know him. And he's from here, like he's from my hometown. So I, I, oh, I knew him wait, before wait, he even reached. Are we WWE. just gonna look by that? Are we just gonna look by that? Yo, Tiffany, I saw that. You're live. You're live. You definitely just tried to drink your water with the bottle top on. Oh. <laughs> A little bit of the water. Yeah, a little bit of the water. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of the bottle cap. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, so that's awesome. I'm I'm glad uh, that uh, even with the the Plan B thing, that's awesome that you just 
you're gonna keep doing it and keep like pushing yourself into wrestling like, that's 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 it's really awesome to hear um so this interview has been amazing nick uh but unfortunately it has to come to an end so we have one final question for you uh what is some piece of advice that you would give to someone like uh, maybe a young, inspiring wrestler or someone in the a young and inspiring that maybe wants to be a professional wrestling referee, what advice would you give them? Uh, I'd let them know that no matter what they do in wrestling, that you can be you, <laughs> but you ain't Shane. <laughs> You'll never be. Oh. Never. <laughs> oh, what a way to end it. Best promo ever. <laughs> nah, but keep training. Honestly, if you don't, if you don't train as a wrestler first, you'll be a crappy referee. And you keep telling me about how oh, I rep everywhere. If you've never trained as a wrestler, you will never understand what it means to be in that ring as a wrestler. So the boys will never respect you, and then you'll end up like the ref from Rev Pro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god! I didn't say that though. No, no, they'll be edited out. Don't worry. <laughs> Editing. Are you gonna edit out her trying to drink from a closed bottle? Uh, of I don't think that's happening. I think that's staying in the podcast. That's. We don't. Uh, okay. Get out. Let like, these things work out. All right. Yeah. Okay, we mess things up all the time. Whatever, but you know that's okay. what things that didn't do to testing. Like. I'm just a ref. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all don't know how many mistakes I make. <laughs> exactly. That hashtag nope. right down there. I'm just the ref. Exactly. Cool. <laughs> um, but uh, as for this interview, Nick, we do want to really thank you for coming on here on the No Holds Barred Hour Under the Ropes for this awesome interview and letting the world know who Nick Shin is and your whole story with refereeing. I um, really do appreciate you coming on and uh, having this chat with us. And thank you guys very much for having having me. Like, I may act like an idiot all the time, but I really do appreciate what people like you do for wrestling because this extra social commentary, it just adds on that extra want for the wrestling. For people who can't always get to it or at, don't always have those matches, they really do sit back and listen to podcasts and things like that. Mm-hmm. So don't ever feel like, even if you don't get a lot of views on things, it really doesn't matter because the couple people who do listen really take your words to heart. So everything you guys are talking about, all this all elite stuff and everything, and just talking talking with us little indie people who don't really mean anything, this stuff really means a lot to us. The mm-hmm. fact that you want to interview me, who just does nothing but just counts crap and just dances around rings, like it really touches my heart. And I just want to thank you guys, really, for all the things y'all doing for wrestling. Y'all are doing your part, too, even if you don't feel like it. Awesome. Thank you very much, Nick. That's awesome. It's good to hear. Um all right, and that, guys, that's going to wrap it up here for episode number three of the Under the Ropes podcast right here in the No Holds Bar Network. Here with our uh, honorary guest, Nick Shin. <laughs> the hashtag, go. I'm just a wreck. <laughs> I'm, I'm your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Always joined by my co the EVP of Giggles, the heartbreak <laughs> chick herself, Tiffany. And, guys, we will see you guys next time for the next episode of Under the Ropes. And we'll also see you on the All Elite Podcast this week, double episodes. So we'll see you then. Bye.